الحمد لله الحمد لله الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد والحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله والحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد فقد قال تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة الذاريات بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون وقال جل وعلا كما ورد في سورة الإسراء أو سورة بني إسرائيل وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما صدق الله ومن أصدق من الله قيلا رب شرح لي صدري وسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي I would like to thank my distinguished uh, speakers before me, Imam Muhammad al-Masmari from the Muslim Unity Center and our very own Iona's uh, Education and Training Director, my dear brother Ahsan Beg. Now it's my turn to talk about this as my previous speaker said, it's a vast topic, it's a big subject to talk about in the next half hour, 45 minutes or so, the rights of the creator and the creation. But what I did was that I divided the subject into four, I call them quadrants, four quadrants. Coming from a math background and engineering background, I figured that would look good. Uh, the first quadrant would be the rights of Allah, Allah. The second quadrant would be Hukukul Walidain, the rights of parents. The third quadrant would be Hukukul Ibad, the rights of others, for a lack of a better term. And finally, Hukukul Kaun, or the rights of the universe. So I begin with the rights of the Creator, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this because the previous two speakers talked about Hukukullah, and the ayah is very clear. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We have been created to honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, as my dear brother Ahsan said, we need to recognize Him. First and foremost, recognition. We need to recognize him as not only the Khaliq, the creator, but also the Rabb, the sustainer, the provider, and also the God, the only God, deity that is worthy of worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us simply for this purpose. If we fulfill that in its full essence, then we have fulfilled every right I talked about. If we understand the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfill them in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah, then everything is done. And as Brother Ahsan said, you know, when you talk of rights, there are responsibilities. Before we fulfill our responsibilities, we need to know the rights. Otherwise, there's no responsibilities. So the fact that when we talk about the rights of God, the rights of parents, the right of the people, that means I have a responsibility toward my Lord. I have a responsibility toward my parents. I have a responsibility toward my wife, toward my children, toward my employer toward my people toward everything toward my environment and i need to fulfill those responsibilities but i can only do so if i understand their rights so the rights of the creator the right the main right as the other 
آية من سورة الإسراء begins with وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه That's it وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه الله سبحانه وتعالى Your Lord actually if you want to go into the exact translation or the meaning of the ayah and your Lord had decreed qada qada it's been done Allah had decreed that you make ibadah to none but him to none but him illa iya to none you should not worship and obey anything no one nothing then comes the exception illa iya just like our expression of Islam La ilah, there is no God. Now, of course, if you say that, there is no God, and you don't complete the statement, the atheists will rejoice. But then we have to say the exception, illallah, and this is in the most emphatic way, to negate all things and keep this one thing intact, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we owe Allah this ibadah. You know the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "Allah has rights on you, and you have rights on Allah." One of the companions says, "Oh, so we have rights on Allah subhanahu wa taala?" He says, "Yes, of course, you have rights on Allah." So they inquired, "What are our rights on Allah?" He first told them that the right of Allah. On you is that you should worship Him alone. And your right on Allah is if you meet Him on the day of judgment, worshiping none except Him, it's your right that He gives you paradise. That He gives you paradise. So you see, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only limited to the modes of worship. Imam al-Masmari discussed briefly the ayah, Ya ayu al-ladhina amunu udhkhulu fi silmi kafa. Enter Islam in its entirety. Devote your whole entire life. Qul inna salati wa nusui wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alam. I'm not going to go into this subject because it has already been talked about. So I'm going to move right directly into the second quadrant of the hukuk and the rights, and that is the rights of parents. And one may wonder so far, where does the Prophet fit in all these four quadrants? What happened? How come? Starting from Allah, going into parents, not even mentioning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And I will tell you why. Of course, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam demand certain rights. And inshallah, I will talk about those when it comes to the hukuk of al-ibad. But the reason why I chose to, to talk about hukuk al-walidayn or the rights of parents is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them in that order. First of all, the ayah I recited before you from Surah al-Isra. No mention of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at all. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا First come the Lord, you have to make ibadah, you have to worship and obey your Lord and then to be good to your parents. Then you have other places in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَإِذَا أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ When we took this covenant from the children of Israel that you worship none, you make ibadah to none but Allah ihsana immediately no mention of Musa or any of those great prophets then you have in Surah Al-An'am قُلْ تَعَالَوْا أَتْلُ مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَلَّا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيَا come on, I will tell you what Allah had made forbidden on you, what your Lord had forbidden you from Number one, Allah tushriku bihi shay'a, that you associate none with him. But then, wabil walidayni ihsana. And then he jumped into parents again. So, no mention of any prophets. Surah An-Nisa, wa'abudullaha, wa la tushriku bihi shay'a. 
make ibadah to Allah, kind of like this is the summary of the ibadah and don't commit shirk and now they're combined together in Surah An-Nisa. Allah, make ibadah to Allah. وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا Don't associate anything, anyone with him. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ This ayah spells out the rights of others without even mentioning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just to show you how important it is to fulfill the hukuk of al-ibad. To fulfill the hukuk of al-ibad. So let me move to the rights of parents. Parents demand that they should be obeyed. Disobeying one's parents is considered a big sin in Islam. A big sin. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is an Abdul Rahman min Abi Bakr an Abi radiallahu an, qala qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala unabbi'ukum bi akbar il kabairi thalatha. In another hadith, sab'a. Here he says, Shall I not inform you of three major sins, big sins? Qalu bala ya Rasulullah. They said, oh yes, yes, O oh, Messenger of Allah. Qala lishraku billah. He says, to associate anything or anyone with Allah, shirk, is a big sin. Next to that, wa'uququ walidain to disobey your parents. It's a major sin in Islam. We are supposed to honor, honor our parents. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Be good to them. Be good to them as they are rearing you, as they are raising you while you are growing up. And also when you become independent. Also when they reach that old age when they need you the most. If they reach this old age, either one of them or both of them, never speak a word of contempt to them nor say off to you. Ugh. Never. No matter how they unknow you. You know, this is, there's this one story that's been told. It's a folklore. The old man going out with his son to the park. The son, you know, young man, maybe in his uh, 30s or so, and his father is an old man. You find it on YouTube too. I, I saw that. Apparently, it's, it's a very common story, even in different languages. But it's such a profound story. So this old man sitting next to his son in the park, you know, an old man sitting home alone, his son comes home, he takes him to the park, doing something good to his father, and they're sitting on a bench, and... The son opened up a newspaper and started reading, and dad got the attention of his son, and he pointed out to a bird, and he says, son, what's this? He says, dad, it's a crow. The young man began reading again, and for the second time, dad brings the attention of his son, and he says, son, what's that? Pointing to the same bird. Is dad, it's a crow. For the third time, dad inquires and asks his son, son, what's that pointing the same bird? He says, God damn, I told you it's a crow. Don't you understand? And then the father very patiently pulled out his diary and he started reading to him on such and such day, 
I took the son, whatever his name is, to the park, same park. He sat next to me, and he asked me, he was probably five years old or something like that, and he asked me, pointing to this bird, Dad, what's this? And I told him a crow. And then he asked me for the second time, Dad, what's that? And I told him a crow. And he kept asking me for the fifth, seventh, tenth time. And I was patient with my little son. And I told him, it's a lovely crow. And here you are. You can be patient with your dad. But subhanallah. Yeah, subhanallah. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah, Allah knows what he's talking about. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Don't speak a word of contempt to them nor repel them away from you. Don't send them to the homes. It is your responsibility to take care of both of them in your own home. Just as they raised you when you were little. The attitude should be that we pray. وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا Say, Oh my Lord, be merciful upon them in this old age. Maybe they reached the age of senility. I don't know. We have to be patient. We have to obey them. And pray to them, O oh my Lord, be merciful to them as they have raised me when I was little. We need to remember these things. Honoring parents. Honoring parents. Parents have their own category of rights where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stress, I read how many ayat before you? And many other ayat. So we need to honor our parents, we need to respect them and we need to fulfill their rights. And if I move now to the rights of others, on top of the rights of others comes the rights of the best of the ibad. The best of the ibad. And that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ I'm a human like you. The only exception is that I receive revelations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I'm a human. I'm among those ibad. But we all know that he is the best of all the ibad. And he has rights over us. So I'll talk about the rights of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the rights of the husbands and wives, the rights of mothers, the rights of fathers, the rights of children, the rights of relatives, the rights of neighbors, the rights of the employer, employee, the rights of the Imam and the Khalifa or President or whatever you want to call him, and the rights of people in general, which in the ayah, the Masakin, Ibn Sabil, and all these others, that human rights in general also, inshallah ta'ala, and that would fulfill the third quadrant. I'm just going to give you highlights because honestly speaking, like my dear brother Ahsan said, this is a very vast topic. Each one of those would require a lecture all by itself. So let us go to the rights of others and begin with the rights of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There are basically five basic rights. He has five basic rights upon us. Number one, to believe in him. To believe in him, yes. Number two, to obey him. Number three, to follow him. Number four, to love him. And finally, to respect, honor, and salute him. If I just very quickly give you the dala'il or the proofs. To believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the very first pillar of Islam, so-called pillar of Islam, we have the testimony of faith. We bear testimony that there is no God except Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger, slave and messenger. So we already attest our faith 
belief in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is the second part of this testimony of faith. Now, any Muslim who rejects him to be the final prophet and messenger of Allah, he does not belong to Islam, the community of the Ummah or Muslims. And you know that Qadianis and Ahmadiyyas, among others, don't really believe in the finality of the messengerhood in person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That means they have not really believed in him as they ought to have believed in him. وَمَنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَإِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ سَعِيرًا Whoever does not believe in Allah and His Messenger, indeed Allah has prepared to those disbelievers a blazing fire. But here's the thing. We profess our shahada and we claim to believe in Him. The question comes, do we really believe in Him? That's a good question. Just like we say we believe in the Qur'an. Do we really believe in the Qur'an? Do we really believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa If this is so, then why Allah would say, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, aminu billahi wa rasoolihi. Or you who believe, believe in Allah and His Messenger. Well, we already believe, but Allah knows. It's as my colleague said, it's a lip service. That we say we believe. Believing means action. Believing means I need to understand this man. I need to follow him. I need to obey him. Obedience to him is not only in the ritualistic or only the modes of worship. Our ibadah. It's in everything. Every aspect of our life. This is why Allah said in Surah Nisa, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, aminu billahi wa rasoolihi. And then, those who truly believe have no doubt, no raib within them about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah include us among them. In one instance, he addressed, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. But here, in giving the true definition of a true mu'min, a true mu'min. In Surah Al-Hujurat, he said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا Surely the believers, true believers, are those who truly believe in Allah and His Messenger and doubt not, have no doubt about their iman in Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those true believers are true believers because they understand jihad is an integral part of iman. And that's what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did for 23 long years. Jahada fillahi haqqa jihad. He struggled in the path of Allah as is his due, as the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to struggle for. This is why the ayah, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ So jihad in the path of, unless you follow the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how he struggled to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supreme, you have not believed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because jihad is an integral part of a true mu'min. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا Have no raib. وَجَاهَدُوا And there is this jihad aspect. Are we doing that? Are we doing that? If we're not, then don't call yourself a believer in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. عن أبي موسى عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من سمع, من سمع بي من أمتي أو يهودي أو نصراني ثم لم يؤمن بي دخل النار He said whoever hears of me from my ummah من أمتي Please listen this is why I included this hadith من أمتي أو يهودي or a Jew أو نصراني or a Christian ثُمَّ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِي And did not believe in me. دَخَلَ النَّارِ 
دخل النار enters hell we have to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we ought to believe in him لا يؤمن بالله من لم يؤمن بي the prophet said no one can claim iman billah if you don't believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the second right is to obey him قل أطيع الله والرسول say our messenger of Allah Tell the people to obey Allah and His Messenger and the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَنْ يُطِعَ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ This ayah from Surah An-Nisa. Whoever obeys the Messenger had obeyed Allah Azza wa Jal. Absolute obedience. Hear me out again. Absolute obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No question about it, no if and but or what. Absolute obedience. Whatever your messenger said, you take. Whatever he forbade you from, you forbid yourself from. وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا This is regarding the obedience of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Abi Hurairah, he said, I'll share this hadith with you, a very important hadith. He said, كل أمتي يدخلون الجنة إلا من أبا. My whole entire ummah will enter paradise except those who refuse to enter paradise. They were surprised. قيلة ومن يأبى يا رسول الله Who's that foolish one who will refuse to enter paradise? قال صلى الله عليه وسلم من أطاعني دخل الجنة whoever obeys me enters paradise ومن عصاني فقد أبا whoever disobeys me had refused to enter paradise سبحان الله absolute obedience number three to follow him to follow him what's the difference between obeying him and following him there is a world of difference, a hell of difference between obeying the Messenger of Allah and following the Messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ita'a versus ittiba'a. We have the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ali Imran said, Qul, say to them, Qul in kuntum tuhibboon Allah. Ita'a we already talked about. Obedience to Him, absolutely necessary. But following him may be not so necessary. Will you sin if you don't follow him? Not necessarily. Depends on what aspect of that thing you are not following. If I did not follow him in brushing my teeth with miswak, I'm not going to be punished. It's not a sinful act. If I didn't sleep on my right hand side, it's not a sinful act, although he did it. Right? But listen to this ayah. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي Say to the people, If you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me. Then follow me. What happens if you follow him? اتِّبَاعَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي اتِّبَاعَ Follow his footsteps, follow his model, his lifestyle, emulate his lifestyle. What happens if you do so? يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah will love you. Allah will love you. So, I brush my teeth with the miswak because the Prophet did it and I'm following his way because I want Allah to love me. I sleep on my right side because I want Allah to love me. I do what he did because I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love me. If he marched toward the struggle of Iqamah to deen, I want to struggle for Iqamah to deen as he did because I want Allah to love me. فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ not only will Allah love you, وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ What a powerful ayah. 
and he will forgive you your sins. We are full of sins, whether we like it or not. Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. If you want to get the mercy, the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here's a promise from Allah. There's a promise. Just follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That's all you need to do. But to follow him entails you need to know him. You can't just follow blindly by somebody telling you, oh, he did this, he did this, he did that. Don't listen to me. Go open up the Quran primarily, first and foremost. The Quran talks about his life. And then the seerah. Then follow him. To love him is the fourth right on us. Yes, to love him. Generally speaking, we Muslims today are in love with this material world. And the only time we show our love and compassion toward Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have to admit and say, is when he is slandered or when he is attacked or when someone does something against him. We know what happened recently, right? How many innocent people died as a result of a stupid movie that was made by somebody who is foolish, majnoon, against the Prophet ﷺ and the cartoon of this crazy man in France? How many people? How many people took to the streets showing their reverence, their love to Muhammad ﷺ? Here's my question to you. How many of those people who went out to pray, how many of them know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It's sad. It's really sad. If you really love him, introduce him to the world. If you really love him, show the world about this great man who was sent as a mercy to the worlds. Show the, the world the true character of this Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which Allah himself said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You stand, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the highest pedestal of moral character. That's how you show your love for him. And we have been commanded to love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ أَبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your spouses, your relatives, five relations, and the wealth you have accumulated, we're engrossed in this material world. We want to amass wealth, right? We want to have children, have big families. So say if these five relations and the wealth that you have amassed and the businesses that you so fear that it may disappear and the dwellings, the mansions that you have built for yourselves, all these eight things, if they are more beloved and dear to you than Allah and His Messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the third thing, وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِ To struggle and strive in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then sit and wait until Allah determines your fate. And what do you think the fate of such people? Who prefer the world over Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who preferred relations over Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What do you think the fate of such people? 
they are fusaq, they are rebels. Because Allah said clearly, Wallahu la yahdi al-qawm al Allah is not going to guide such rebellious people. They're rebels. They rebelled against Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu and the sacred duty of jihad and the path of Allah. Now, this ayah is not suggesting that you should hate your relatives and relations and abandon the world. Not at all. What this ayah is saying, the love of Allah and His Messenger and jihad in the path of Allah should exceed the love of these eight things. That's what it means. Love your wife. Love your children. Love your brothers. Love your relatives. Go make money. Have businesses. Live in good homes. Nothing haram about that. But if they become more dear to you than Allah's Messenger and Jihad, then we are in trouble. And the Prophet wasallam said, to Zahra bin Ma'bad عن جده قال كنا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو آخذ بيد عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه. He says we were in the company of the Messenger of Allah and he took a hold of the hand of Umar رضي الله عنه فقال والله يا رسول الله لا أنت أحب إلي من كل شيء إلا نفسي. And Umar said he must have been in a good mood. He says, Wallahi, Ya Rasulullah, I, I swear by Allah, O Messenger of Allah, you are the most beloved one to me after myself. After myself. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والذي نفسي بيده I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul. In other words, I swear by Allah. لا يؤمن أحدكم. No one can claim faith and say I believe. حتى أكون أحب إليه من نفسه until I become more dear and more beloved to himself. We all love ourselves. Omar was not a crazy man. Omar was truthful. Omar was speaking the truth. I love myself. Each one of us prefers himself over anybody else in the world, with the exception of a few whom Allah mentioned in the Quran who prefer others over themselves. This is called itar. Right? So then Qala Umar, actually, in one narration, he paused for a second. Umar paused for a second and then said, فَأَنْتَ الْآنَ وَاللَّهِ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ He said, now you are the most beloved to me even over myself. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم الآن يا عمر Now that's Now that's better, O oh Umar. That's better, O oh Umar. And we have in the hadith where the Prophet said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين. No one can claim faith and iman until I become more dear to him than himself, than his father, than his son, and the whole entire world. So we need to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anybody else. Number five, to respect, honor, and salute Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is his right. فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِهِ وَعَزَّرُوهُ وَنَصَرُوهُ وَاتَّبَعُوا النُّورِ This ayah is very clear. وَاتَّبَعُوا النُّورَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ مَعَهُ أُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Those who believe in him, honor and help him and follow the light which is sent down with him are the successful ones. So this is something that we have to understand. He demands respect and we need to stand up for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have been commanded to salute him. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya ayu alladhina amanu do what? Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allah and the angels send 
their blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All you who believe, salute him, send God's blessings, peace and blessings upon him. And this is what we say in our salah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim and so on and so forth. Rights of husbands and wives that comes after that. I don't think I can do justice with the next three minutes. I really wanted to touch upon also the rights of the environment, the rights of, you know, animals, the rights of water, the rights of this whole creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're making a mockery of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It took Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to build this world with his own hands, as he described, and we don't assimilate our hands to his hands. But he did say, his arsh was on, on water. His arsh was al al When it was all water, earth wasn't there yet. He was working hard to build what we have today. Beautiful, luscious, green, beautiful colors. Perfect for us as a place to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do we do to this environment? We take all the toxic wastes and dump it in the oceans and in the waterways and rivers and so on and so forth. What do we do with the environment? Instead of using carriages, horses, where their manure is good for earth, we use now vehicles where there is fuel becomes pollution to this whole world. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Think about it for a moment. And now we're crying, oh, the ozone and this and that, and this world is going to end because we're not taking care of our environment. And you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. What are we doing to earth? We're injecting chemicals when they used to use, you know, sheep's manure. This is the, the natural fertilizer, the waste of animals, subhanAllah. Had Allah not created anything except there is benefit in every little thing in it, including its wastes. You use its manure to get good, nutritious produce from the ground. What do we do now? What we do is we insert chemicals into the ground so we can grow more produce. We don't care whether it is nutritious or not. Who cares? I need to make my buck. I need to sell. Now we give hormones, induce hormones into chickens and cows because I want them to grow quickly so I can sell more. Forget whether they are nutritious and good for you or not good for you. Wallahi, animals have right over us on the Day of Judgment. They're going to cry before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and demand justice. This environment will demand justice on the Day of Judgment. I wish I have more time. It's a, it's a very important subject, hardly discussed. Hardly discussed. You know how many times the word ard is mentioned in the Quran? More than 450 times, perhaps 489 times, the word earth. What is earth? Earth is our mother. Earth is the mother that bore Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and all of us. And is this how we treat earth? Is this how we treat the environment? Think about it for a moment. Wallahi, we Muslims are sleeping, are sleeping. It takes non-Muslims, men of conscience, people of conscience to stand up to the rights of the environment, to the rights of animals, to the rights of vegetables. So the rights of the creator and the rights of creation. In conclusion... I'd like to come back to the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His right, his exclusive right, 
is that he should be worshipped alone. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا It is his exclusive right to be honored here in this world and recognized as the only supreme authority on earth. That's his right. He is the only rightful lawgiver who needs to be honored in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, In al hukmu illa lillah. Amara Allah ta'budu illa iyah. Thalika al deen al qayyim. Walakinna akthar al nasi la yalamu. Surely, rule, authority, sovereignty belong to Allah. It's to none in al hukmu illa lillah. It belongs to nobody. It doesn't belong to Obama. It does not belong to the United Nations. It does not belong to Europe or the European Union. It does not belong to anyone. It belongs to the Creator. And it is His right that His laws are enforced, not man. <laughs> he has commanded, it's a command, that you worship and obey none except Him. This is the true system. This is the true way of life. You want happiness? Follow his laws. Then you will have happiness, true happiness. Why? Because you will be establishing justice on earth. In the same surah, Surah to Yusuf, In al hukmu illa lillah, alayhi tawakkaltu, wa alayhi fal yatawakkal il mutawakkilun. Sovereignty, authority, rulership is to none but Allah. Depend on Him. He's the lawgiver. Those who want to depend on somebody, don't depend on people who devise laws for you. In some cases, maybe most cases are okay. But in some cases, they are devastating. They're destroying the earth. We need to struggle. This kingdom of heaven on earth is not going to come while sitting, listening to lectures like this, sleeping on comfortable beds, taking vacations, enjoying the world. It requires dedicated people who can devote their whole entire life for this struggle, for this great noble cause, Making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supreme. Takbiru al-Rabb. Idharu al-Deen ala al-Deen kullih. Liyakuna al-Deen kulluhu lillah. So that the Deen, the system of life becomes, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this cannot happen, my dear brothers and sisters, without a jama'ah, a disciplined jama'ah. A jama'ah that come together for that particular noble cause and are disciplined enough to make hijrah and jihad in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iona is such a jama'ah among other jama'at and I'm proud of it. And if you'd like to know more about Iona, please go to our website, ionaonline.org and go to the FAQ, Frequently Ask questions and inshallah you will learn more about it. Asif who had been such a great host is the Amir of the local chapter here in Detroit. Thank you so much for emceeing this event. Brother Ahsan, thank you for coming all the way from California and on behalf of all of you I would like to thank in his absence Imam Muhammad al-Masmari. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله على خير خلقه محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته